Welcome to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. We love your questions. We love when you call in. And how do you do it? Well, you don't call in. You go to the... that was That's old style. <laughs> that's like the old days. No, you go to the funastrology.com website up at the upper left. There's an orange box. You can do it anonymously and leave us a question in your own voice. Hey, Thomas, this is Danny, and I just had a question for you. Um, I have a friend who I pulled their chart the other day, and the sun and the north node share the exact same position. They are both at like 15 degrees Aries in her first house. And I can't help but feel like that is a really meaningful placement. But I've done some research and I can't really find anything that talks about the north node and the sun, like literally sitting on top of each other. Um, and like I said, it being in the first house just feels really amplified. And then Aries being the first sign, all of that. So I was curious if you had any thoughts. Thanks so much. I've got to say, I love our listeners. They send in such great questions, and this is one of them, and she is so right. Danny, um, the sun in the first house alone is an amplified position. In Aries, it's also amplified. And with the north node conjuncted in the first house, it's like triply amplified. I think of the nodes as being karmic influences. The north node, whatever sign it's in, those are qualities that you have done well with in past lives. And you're meant to build on those. The qualities of the south node, in her case, Libra, are qualities that she has not done well with or has experienced some negativity in. And that's, of course, relationships. And that can mean any number of things, depending on the chart. The South Node in Libra can mean a wonderful, loving marriage that broke up through something horrible like war or natural disaster. So there can be a residual carryover between, I'm afraid to get married because the last one I loved him or her so much. And then this horrible thing happened and ended and I'm unconsciously afraid of partnerships. It can be something like that. But the North Node with her sun rising in Aries is like a triple strength Aries. It's almost incumbent on this woman to live her life absolutely according to her own desires, inspirations, and dictates. Now, that can lead to what looks like selfishness. It isn't. What she really is about in this life is seeing how far she can evolve herself, how much higher learning in terms of spirituality and metaphysics or even higher education or philosophy how much life can she learn? And the only way she can learn is by initiating things, going out there and starting things, trying things, exploring things, following her own bliss in particular. So her life may look like it's very self-centered. Well, it is. It doesn't have to be in a negative way because, in fact, all of us, it's incumbent on us to learn about ourselves, know thyself, and take that and evolve it. But with a triple strength Aries like that, she can be very forward, very outspoken, very confident in herself, and constantly trying something new because she absorbs things very quickly. She learns quickly. And she gets bored easily, so she's on to something new because she's constantly trying to expand her horizons and her experiences in life. I'd love to know her. Uh, she may be quick to temper and so on. It depends on where her Mars is, but that's really in a nutshell. When you've got the sun and the node conjunct each other, the north node, you're pretty much obligated to learn all about that sign and what it means and to evolve that quality, those qualities of that sign in yourself. So she's likely to be very bright, very impatient, but very uh, forward thinking and inspirational, really, in a way. She's a born leader. And she can develop those qualities, too. She's original. She's original. She's, there's nobody quite like her. She thinks differently than other people. She talks different, looks different. She likes to be somewhat the center of attention. I'm assuming she has Aries rising. She could have Pisces rising and still have that 
it's on a north node in her first house, but I'm assuming she has Aries rising. So this really doubles down, triples down on all those Aries qualities, uh, which is a wonderful thing as long as she uh, maintains consideration for other people. And this is one of the lessons she'll have to learn in life is to learn to be think a little bit before she speaks and to, to realize how she, the words and the actions that she performs in life, how other people see those and take them so she can learn to be more compassionate, more considerate of what other people's feelings are before she speaks. Otherwise she can alienate people without intending to, that's not her mission. But she is a born leader in something, and I hope she finds out what that is and follows that star. Now, that puts the south node opposite the sun. So is that a double whammy negative against those south node characteristics, or at least tension? I said negative. Tension for those south node characteristics in the relationship, seventh house. Yeah, when you have the South Node like that, it's incumbent on her. She's already in past lives developed the developed the Aries qualities in this life and through bitter experience in relationships. She is meant to learn how to treat other people as equals to herself, to respect other people's feelings, respect other people's thoughts, accept their input learn to collaborate with other people. Other people are not trying to get in her way. They're meant there to, two are better than one. So if she can learn to consider other, for example, I don't know what the rest of her chart is like, but having that combination of the sun conjunct the north node in Aries in the first house and the south node in Libra in the seventh house, believe it or not, she could be a fine counselor, a psychologist, a lawyer, counseling other people, a life coach, any of those things, because those sorts of careers force you to take other people into consideration and to be just and fair and learn to collaborate, learn to work with other people. And in doing that, she will find that she actually furthers her own ambitions. In Vedic astrology, as you know, Rahu and Ketu, they view the nodes of the moon as the head and the tail of the dragon. It does not have a positive connotation. What are your thoughts on the nodes in general? Did the Vedic interpretation, did they have a point? Are the nodes challenging? And then when the node gets close to the sun, we, hit, we talk about eclipses and all the power and mystique and mystery around them. What's going on? Because the nodes are just axis points of of orbits. That's all it is. It's just an axis point. The nodes actually are the points where the, where the moon either is rising above the ecliptic, and that's the north node point, or where the moon is going south of the ecliptic, and that's the south node point, the descending or ascending nodes. I've studied Vedic astrology, and who am I? But in my experience, and, and this has been a controversy since as long as I've studied astrology. Some authorities think like I do, other authorities think like the Vedics do. The North Node is considered favorable by most astrologers, not Vedic. But in the West, it is. The South Node is considered a detriment by most Western astrologers, not in Vedic. And in my experience, the Western approach has made more sense and has worked better for me. I happen to have my south node in my first house. I have it rising in Capricorn. And I totally understand in my own life, I've lived long enough to know, the South Node in Capricorn are those traits that I have never developed in a past life that I am meant to develop in this life. My North Node is in Cancer in my seventh house of relationships. And I totally understood that too in my life. And in fact, I have very consciously had to, I'm a Libra and Libras are meant to to go through life as easily and pleasantly as possible with as little work as possible. And believe me, that was my modus operandi until I found astrology. 
Just make it easy. Enjoy everybody and everything. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't even sweat the big stuff. Just have fun. Well, it doesn't work. <laughs> you have to make a living and you have to work at it. And that is Saturn and Capricorn and the South Node in my first house. And I also had to learn with the South Node in Capricorn rising, I can't go through life giving orders to other people. The only orders I can give are to myself. So I can't manipulate people. I can manipulate myself in a positive way. But I was a good manipulator when I was a kid. Because I could charm the birds off the trees. I'm a Libra. And I could get by with murder. I didn't, <laughs> not literally. But it was really true for me until I found astrology and realized this interpretation of the nodes made a great deal of sense. In other words, my south node in Capricorn basically says, grow the heck up. Be a man, grow up, be mature, be an adult, find something you love to do, be good at it, make a living at it, discipline yourself. And that all worked for me. And yes, love other people. I've got the North Node in the seventh house, and I do. I love other people. What would have been the breakdown? What would have not developed in a prior well, lifetime? The, the South Node in, the, uh, in Capricorn in the first house would have meant I would have never found a career. I would have gone through life avoiding responsibility. I would have gone through life avoiding adulthood. I would have been an adult child, which I was until I got to astrology. I truly was. My father was. He was an adult child. He was a wonderful man in a lot of ways. He was a wonderful doctor. But personally, he was childish all of his life, very immature. What about that Capricorn? I get the first house. How does Capricorn? Again, how does Capricorn? That, you know, I really do think of the the ascendant as being your mission in life. This is why you incarnated in this life. And with me, with Capricorn, a couple of things. One, my mission was: you better find a career, Capricorn, that you love, and be really good at it, because what you really want, Bob, out of life is respect. You think you want love. You think you want other people to like you. Well, they do for the most part. But what I really want is to find something that I can live a long life doing. And I am ambitious, and that's Capricorn rising too. But you have to grow up with Capricorn rising, learn to prioritize so that you're not wasting a lot of time, which I certainly did before astrology, and become a professional at whatever it is you love to do. And that's the big secret in astrology and in life, follow your bliss. Well, I did that. And all because of astrology, as I've told you and tell clients, I would have been dead in my mid-40s without astrology. I truly would, but I'm not. <laughs> I don't like this question I'm going to ask you, but it's there and I, I just think, okay, let's put this out. If somebody were to say, if we're focusing on our evolutionary development, if we're focusing on our soul growth, would we focus more, would it be more better to focus more on the North Node side or the South Node side, or equal? It's really equal. If you look at the North Node as traits that you are carrying, positive traits that you've developed in a past life. For example, I have my North Node in Cancer, and that's the home and the family and roots and all of that. I've experienced that in past lives in a positive way. In this life, my south node opposite that in Capricorn is the profession. And I've had past lives as a woman, the north node in Cancer, past lives. So I've been a mother. I've been a wife. I've done that. This life, it's about developing a profession, developing, being, getting real. You know, I think of, I call Saturn the get real planet. And that's really all it means if you will just get real about what Saturn rules in your chart where Capricorn is and get real about what house Saturn is in. But get real about those things. Don't try and cheat. Don't try and avoid being real about it. Then you'll tend to be okay. So that's that's my mission. So you focus on both equally. And with my case, the South Node being qualities that you need to consciously develop in this life. 
And I did. I started working. I got my Social Security card when I was 13 so I could have a paper route. <laughs> so I, I like to earn money and I like to work. And I started very young. And before I even had the paper route, I was already earning money, believe it or not, as a magician. So that's how that works. Technical question here. Do you set your chart to the mean nodes or the true nodes? The mean nodes. Would you explain? Well, the mean nodes is an average of the, the nodes movement. That's all. And the true node is theoretically a, a more accurate point. But the moods nodes can vary a little bit from the mean node. But I just take the average. And it does shift that degree point. And I know degrees yeah. are so important. So have you yeah. found accuracy with the mean setting? Yes, I have. Okay. I, that's exactly why I use it, Thomas. For example, my nodes are 10 degrees. Excuse me, my nodes are 4 degrees. And so multiples of 4 in terms of relationships, because my moon, south node in the first house, north node in the seventh house. So... <laughs> Uh, I was fairly romantic, fairly young. So I, my first going steady, I was eight years old. <laughs> but again, eight add four, 12, I went steady again. 16, that was my high school sweetheart. And we went steady too. So at multiples of four have worked out in my life. You can take those degrees of birth, you see, and multiply them by other numbers and get additional ages where they're very active and predominant in your life. So my nodes are active every four years in my life. And every four years, I will tend to meet somebody. It doesn't have to be a mate in the seventh house. It could be a business partnership like when you and I met every four years. Interesting. Totally interesting. Yeah. But that's why I use the mean nodes. Okay. All right. And I know that the degrees are so important to you and also the accuracy that you get from the equal house system. And then that carries forward into here. Well, that's great. Thank you so much. I hope that answers the question for our listener. Thank you, Robert. And where we keep all the notes of everything going on in our podcast here is in our show notes. We've got our Discord channel link where we have Kristen Lawhead continuing the conversation. Other people, a lot of you have joined in that forum and kick questions around about the podcast and all things astrology. Our Facebook group, the Subconscious Mind Mastery and Fun Astrology Podcast listeners, is a private group on Facebook. And Robert's reading information is in there as well. That's the show notes. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.